Slow relay is typical of the improved type of distance relay. Instead of a beam, this uses a cylinder moving within a magnetic field, similar to the directional overcurrent element. Coils are wound around the electromagnet, and these are fed from the CTs and VTs of the primary circuit. The circuitry is designed to give the relay specific characteristics, as shown by this circle diagram. The relay will operate if the measured impedance from the point of origin falls within this circle. The main feature of this relay is that maximum closing force of the relay occurs when the impedance is at a specific phase angle, usually about 60 degrees. This is similar to the phase angle of the line conductor impedance. The result of this characteristic is that as the impedance phase angle changes, let us say becomes smaller, then the unit will operate only for a lower impedance, that is, a higher level of current. This means that it is less susceptible to incorrect operation due to the load impedance, which can cause the relay's impedance to have a very low phase angle down here. Remember, this unit will only operate for faults within the circle. However, in some cases, we may actually want the relay to operate as a backup for close-in faults upstream. In this case, the characteristic can be offset like this, so that it will operate for very low impedance in the reverse direction. For example, a phase fault upstream but close to the bus would provide a very low impedance and probably fall within the circle here and so trip the breaker. For second zone protection, the second element can be offset like this. Again, because of the relatively narrow band, it is well outside of the load impedance. Phase to ground faults, especially on short lines, provide a particular problem for the distance relay. The arc often contains considerable resistance, so reducing the phase angle of the measured impedance. It also increases the magnitude of the impedance. Consequently, even if the fault is only halfway along the line, the measured impedance often falls outside the operating circle. A common method of getting around this problem is to install relays which measure reactance only. The operating characteristic is shown by this horizontal line. Reactance is measured on the vertical. During normal operation, the total reactance of the load and the transmission line will be above the operating set point. This will be 90% of 86.6 .6 ohms or 78 ohms in our example. If a ground fault occurs halfway along the transmission line, the relay will detect the decrease in value of reactance to 43 ohms and operate the tripping contacts it will not be affected by resistance in the arc. One problem is that the reactance relay is not directional and so will operate for faults upstream of the protected zone. This problem is resolved by using the reactance relay in conjunction with a MO element. The characteristic is shown on this diagram. There are two reactance elements, each protecting first and second zones. The circle diagram for the MO element shows that it is set to protect the third zone. It includes an external timer to prevent early tripping. But additionally, the MO element also contains a permissive contact in the operating circuit of the reactance relays. This restricts operation of the reactance relays to this area. The permissive contact will only close when the impedance falls within the circle. If the fault is upstream, the reactance relay will operate. But its tripping circuit will be incomplete because the mole relay will not have operated and the permissive contacts remain open. 
Because of this, the Mo unit is often referred to as the starting unit since it must operate before other units in the relay can trip out the circuit. Distance relays of the solid state type are designed with yet other variations in operating characteristics. Clearly, the impedance type of relay is quite complex and is well developed. It has many desirable characteristics for application on the transmission system, as we shall see in future videotapes. Now, the types that we have been discussing are the most common. If you want further details, you can always refer to our video program on test and calibration of specific relays. An important feature of the distance relay is the provision of zone protection, generally three zones. This allows us to provide backup. Generally speaking, the first element protects the primary zone as shown here by opening the first breaker, breaker A. The second element provides local backup in case the first element fails to operate. That is, it would trip breaker A after a short time delay. The second element also provides remote backup in the case of a fault on bus B or out on line two. This would only operate and trip out breaker A in case the primary protection at bus B failed to operate. Similarly, zone three protection is provided as remote backup for faults along the remainder of transmission line two and on into line three. Also, for protection of line one, a set of distance relays will be installed at bus B looking towards A. The first zone elements overlap, and a fault occurring within this zone would cause the instantaneous operation of both relays and the opening of both breakers. Now, for a fault in the last 10% of line one, breaker B trips instantaneously, but we would have to wait for zone two clearing at A. Remember, remote backup will isolate a greater part of the system and perhaps cause outage to a greater number of customers. Also, there may be more damage and system shock. In this context, intertripping using various communication channels could be used. We'll discuss this in future tapes. Nowadays, more emphasis is being placed on local backup. Several types of protection are provided for each zone, and frequently a duplicate, so-called redundant installation of identical relays is provided. This would be fed by separate CTs and a separate source of DC tripping current. This in turn will be fed to separate tripping coils within the breakers. Usually in a fault condition, both of these protection circuits will operate in parallel at the same time. We will be looking in more detail at backup and the application and operation of distance relays in future tapes. In this videotape, we've tried to survey the main features of the most common types of protection relay. Of course, there are other types of relays, such as frequency relays, negative phase sequence relays, as well as many others which we have yet to discuss. But don't worry, we'll get to these in due course. Now that we have a good understanding of how relays work, we'll be looking at some of the basic technology of protection in the next tape, before moving on to study specific applications. For now, please switch off the videotape and very thoroughly go through this material in your workbook.